Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today we are trying the new Sealed by Spellbinders kit and collection. And we're gonna create some really beautiful wax seals for our card making projects. So I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna kind of have a first try together at these wax seals. Really quickly before we get into it, I wanna let you know that everything is linked down below and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. Now without further ado, Let's get into it. All right, so here is the Sealed by Spellbinders Wax Seal Kit. They have sort of a starter kit like this, which I really like, and then they have a full collection of supplies to kind of coordinate along with. Now I've ripped off the belly band because I was told that inside they've got a bunch of instructions for the wax seals, which is really awesome, so don't throw this part away. All right, I love this packaging. And what I love about this is that inside of this kit, they've included everything you need to sort of get started. So it's not super daunting to get started creating the wax seals and you know everything that you need. So they give you this really great silicone mat, which is gonna be nice and heat protective. So when you're creating your wax seals, this is gonna be a great surface. And then they give you these really beautiful um, products. So this is going to be sort of the warmer that you're going to rest your spoon on top of. It's got some little air vents in there and you're supposed to place this right on top of your tea light candle. Now you're gonna need some tea light candles. I purchased this just from Amazon. I'll leave links down below to where I got them. But any regular tea light candle will work. This doesn't come included inside the kit, but many of you guys probably have some on hand. All right, now it also comes along with one of the wax seals. This one says for you, and it's got a nice little branch motif on the side there. And there's a bunch of other wax seal stamps you can purchase separately. And then there's also a little spoon for pouring out the wax. They've also included some wax tablets to get you started. I believe this is the gold color, but then again, there's lots of different colors to choose from on their website. So they sent me a nice little sampling of colors to play with in today's video. I've placed my tea light down onto my silicone mat and I'm just going to go in and light this with either a match or lighter to get it started. And then once we've got that going, we can then place the heating reservoir kind of right over top and center that right in the center there. Now things are gonna get pretty hot under the heating reservoir with that candle. So make sure that all of it is resting on a heat safe surface like the silicone mat to make sure your work surface is protected. Then we can grab our spoon and place that right inside there. And then I'm going to grab my wax beads. Now I'm going to grab three to four to start out with and sort of let those melt. And I'll speed this up so you guys can see. Now once you see that it's nice and heated, I'm gonna go in here with kind of a craft pick and start around to help it get nice and hot. And you can also kind of swirl around that metallic in there. If you can take it right out of here and start pouring this onto our silicone surface. So you can of course go right onto your craft project, but I love that they included the silicone mat because it makes it easy to pour this on top of your silicone mat. Then we can peel it off and just adhere it onto our project. So it's a lot easier than going straight to the project. Now I'm going to grab the wax seal that we have included in the kit. And I'm just going to lightly press this down. I just let it kind of rust down and drop into the wax. Next, I'm gonna bring in two more of the peachy pink beads. And then I'm going to place one more of the gold bead in there because we can mix colors together and get sort of a swirl of the colors. So while this is cooling, we'll have another one heating up. It makes for an easy process. All right, and that first one is not too bad at all for my first try. I really like how it turns out. And then of course, just by peeling it off the mat, we can add some strong adhesive and put this onto a project. So once that wax is melted inside of there, we can stir it around a little bit and you can stir it as much or as little as you want. I'm gonna stir it just a little bit because I still want there to be a nice swirl between those two colors and not have them fully mix. All right, then we can go in, place this right onto the mat Pour it out there. You can see it's creating a beautiful marbled look already. And then I'm going in with a different stamp. This one is the mandala. And when I place this down, I'm gonna apply almost no pressure and just sort of follow wherever the most is coming out and kind of press it towards that area. I find that that gives you a nice even edge. And then of course, just let it sit and wait. Now before I clean this out and move to a different color, I wanna add a little bit of red inside here. So I'm gonna go in with two red beads and then one gold bead. Since they're all similar colors, they'll still mix to create a beautiful blend. So you'll know that it's ready when you can kind of easily peel it off the mat and then we'll peel it right out of our stamp there. And I love how that one turned out. Check out that beautiful marbling we get with the gold and pink and that really great mandala design. All right, we'll mix this red and gold together just a little bit to get a swirl of that color. I love how it's looking so far. Pour this right out onto our mat. And then I'm gonna use the Merry Christmas stamp. It has a little branch and the Merry Christmas sentiment. Again, place it in the center, barely pressing at all. And then I'm gonna kind of 
follow where the most of the wax is coming up and you get a nice even ring around the edge. And again, no pressure, just let it kind of sit into there. And check out that beautiful Merry Christmas stamp with that little bit of marbling of the gold and red. And I'll show you how to highlight the sentiments a little bit later on in the video. All right, so I've been told that the easiest way to clean up with the spoon is to just go in with some paper towel. And again, just be really careful because we're working with sort of hot wax here. So you don't want to burn yourself. So use lots of paper towel while you're wiping this out and make sure to get it good and clean. All right, here I'm going to use three of the green wax and then I'll add one of the antique gold in because I like that sort of metallic mix. And then again, I'll take this out, pour it out onto our mat. And then I'll take that same Merry Christmas stamp because that one's just beautiful. Slowly press it down and kind of guide it into place and then let it sit there until it's hardened. Oh, I really love how this one turned out. That's just beautiful with a little bit of bronze in there. And then that green color is just gorgeous. We'll go in and pour out our wax. This is just so much fun to do. I could literally do this all day long. And I like that while one is heating up, you're then kind of working on stamping the next. All right, we'll place that Merry Christmas one right back in. I really like this stamp for card making for the holidays. All right, here we're gonna do kind of a candy cane type colorway. So I'm gonna go in with some pearl white and some of the red and kind of hopefully swirl those around to get a beautiful colorway. All right, and while that's heating up, this one seems like it's probably dry. And there we go. I love how that Merry Christmas seal turns out. And again, I've been raving about how beautiful this green color is. And you can see by the wax seals that I've been doing, the edges are pretty even. So that tip where you kind of follow where most of the wax is going before you kind of drop it in is gonna help you get that even border all the way around. And I feel like you'll get the hang of it too. Once you start working with it, it gets a lot easier. And each time you kind of learn something new when you're making the wax seals. This looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun when we swirl this around. So I'm going to mix it just a little bit. I'm gonna try not to do too much because I don't want them to just blend. But of course, if you mix the white with the red, you would get a much lighter red color. So that white can really be extremely versatile. Oh my gosh, I love how this is marbling already. Let me pour it out. And then I'll grab that same Merry Christmas stamp, sort of press it down, and again, follow where most of that wax is going before we kind of drop it in. All right, I'll lift this one out. And I love that sort of swirl of colors we got there with the red and the white. And there is our last wax seal. I love this thanks design with that mandala around it. This is gonna be great for a lot of different cards. All right, then when I'm done, I love how simple cleanup is. Again, just grab a big wad of paper towel and sort of clean this hot part out of the spoon. And then all you need to do is take out your tea light, blow that out, and then wait for kind of these metal parts to cool off. All right, so I'm gonna set this off to the side and let's use our wax seals on some card making projects. Next, I thought this sealed berry wreath was beautiful because you can hot foil this and it leaves enough room inside there to place a wax seal right in the center. This is also cool because it comes in two separate pieces that you can use together as a full wreath or just as kind of a swag around an image. Today I'm gonna to use it together and since I don't want it to move, I'm just going to put it together like a puzzle piece there and then I'll grab some mint tape. This is just masking tape from scrapper.com and it's going to really nicely hold these together while we run it through our machines. So there we go, but I love that you're given both options. It makes it a lot more versatile. All right, so I'll do the same thing. I'm going to bring in a little bit of the hot foil. I'll place down my hot foil plate so we can make sure we have enough foil for it. And then I can go in and really easily with my rotary trimmer, just cut right around the hot foil plate, making sure there isn't too much. And I love how close you're able to get to it to make sure you're not gonna overfoil. All right, so I'm going to place my wreath down, design side facing up, and this is what I'm talking about. So the foils usually have a pretty side. You wanna face the pretty side of the foil towards the pretty design side of the plate. And then you can place on your cardstock. Here I'm going to use kind of an emerald dark green cardstock. And then we'll set our timer until it turns solid. Then I'll bring it to my machine, place down the two plates, and run it right through the platinum six, I'm going pretty slowly to make sure everything transfers. And then when I lift off that foil, check out that beautiful wreath. It was pretty much perfectly foiled with no overfoiling, which I love. All right, with this wreath, I'm gonna go in using my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors and just quickly fussy cut this out. There wasn't a die included to cut this out, but it's pretty easy to just go right around the edge. I leave a little bit of a border. I love these scissors for the job because they got that spring-loaded handle, so it makes it really easy so my hands don't get tired while I'm cutting. And also, it's got a nice fine point to get into all of the little details as well. For a background, I wanna keep it super simple and I'm going to use my wood grain background stamp. I'm gonna use a little bit of Gur ink on craft cardstock for a nice tone on tone effect. And it's not gonna stand out too much from the craft cardstock. I just kinda of want a subtle texture in the background. 
and this is gonna be perfect. This is one of my new favorite background stamps because it's just such a classic pattern and it creates such a realistic looking wood grain. So once it's all inked up, I'm going to place the cardstock down. And I love that you can sort of choose where you put the cardstock as to what type of wood grain you want. One side is more kind of knotted and one side has more of a loose marbled texture. I'm gonna add pressure and then you can see we've got that beautiful wood grain one to me stamp it all out. I love how that looks. And you can use a darker ink if you want it to be more kind of saturated on there, but I like this sort of subtle color. And you guys know me, I'm always trying to add a bit of dimension here and there with inks. So I'm just gonna go right around the edge using that same color, a little bit of Gur ink, and a little bit goes a long way with something like this. And I'm just going to add a little bit of ink on the edges. This is going to darken the edge and leave the center lighter. And because the center is lighter, it's gonna naturally draw your eye to the center where we put our focal point wreath. The edge just gives it a really nice finished look. All right, then I'll add the wreath right down on some foam tape on the front. Then to adhere down the wax seal, I'm just going to use a little bit of strong liquid adhesive. I'll place it right on the back and then we can pop it down right in the front and center of that wreath. And here I used the red Merry Christmas wax seal, which will act as our sentiment for this card. Now to make the sentiment on the wax seal stand out, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of slippery and wet lunar paste, which is this kind of yellowish gold color. And I'm just going to use the slightest amount on my finger. I can even tap off some of the excess in the jar. And then I'll just lightly rub that over top of the sentiment here so that it makes it so much easier to read. That little bit of lunar paste makes it a lot more legible and also gives it a bit of a gold shine to it, which I really love as well. And there is a look at the finished card. I just added a little bow with twine at the bottom to finish it off. And I love how this turned out with the wreath being foiled, that beautiful wood grain background, and the star of the show being that really great wax seal right in the center. It's a great way to use the wax seal as a focal point on your card. For this first background, I'm gonna try something I haven't quite ever done before. I'm going to be using this new Glimmer Hot foil, or at least new to me. It's called Opal, and it's kind of a clear transparent foil that has a really beautiful shine to it. And I'm gonna use it with the Geo Snowflakes Glimmer Hot Foil Plate from my Christmas collection. All right, so I'm going to pull some of this foil out. You guys can see it's very unique compared to any of the other foils I use. So I'm excited to see the results. I like to sort of place the foil down onto a cutting mat there. I'm going to place the Glimmer Hot Foil Plate down to see how much I need. And then I'll go in with a rotary trimmer. If you guys haven't tried this, it makes it super easy to cut the foil and then have a nice straight line. This is super helpful because sometimes I find that scissors make it really difficult to cut through that foil. All right, so as always with Glimmer Hot Foiling, I'm going to place the foil plate down um, with the design side facing up. And then usually with the foil, you want to face the pretty side towards the design. Now this side was outwards, which is usually the side with the foil on it. But since this is clear, it's a little bit more difficult, but I'm going to place it so that the pretty side of the foil faces towards the design side. We'll do more foiling in a bit with regular foil so you can see how it works. And then I thought this opal foil would look beautiful on a piece of navy cardstock, so I'm going to place that down right on top. All right, then I'm going to press this so that the timer blinks. All right, then I can place my plates that come with the machine down and I'll run this right through our platinum six die cutting machine. And you wanna move a little bit slower than usual to make sure that all of the foil transfers onto the cardstock. All right, so when we lift this off, Check that out. You get such a beautiful foil design. And I like how it creates a little bit more of a subtle foiling because it's that clear, but on this dark cardstock, it really stands out nicely still. All right, now we do have just a little bit of overfoiling in some areas with the design. I always like to start off with a regular eraser and try erasing it off and see if that works. Now, sometimes the regular eraser won't work with some overfoiling, and that's when we need to move to our mono sand eraser. So the mono sand eraser is just a little bit rougher. It's going to really easily remove that foil. So if you have any areas where there's a little bit of overfoiling, just go in with your mono sand eraser and simply do a really light erasing and it'll remove it off of the surface and then you should be good to go. I wanna add a little bit of depth to this background too. So I'm gonna go in using a bit of Midnight Snack ink, which is gonna be just a little bit darker than this blue cardstock. And I'm just going to ink up the edges a little bit. You can see this just adds lots of depth and dimension to the background. And again, it's going to draw your eye to the center of the card where things are a little bit lighter and that's where we're gonna put our focal point. 
A little bit of ink goes a long way and helps to sort of bring the design together when you're creating a background like this. And the foil will sort of resist the ink, but we just want to wipe off the surface to keep the foil nice and shiny and get rid of any of the excess ink. So I'm going to use the sealed holly sprigs where it has these sprigs that you can kind of stick underneath the wax seals, but they also have this with different flowers. So you can use these sort of ideas for all season long. So I'll link down below to some of these two if you want them for regular everyday cards. All right, I'm using a couple different colors of Spellbinders cardstock to run this through. I'm gonna run the holly through on some green. And there's also all these little berries which I'll run through on some red cardstock. We'll do a little bit of awkward die cutting and run these right through our platinum machine. And just make sure to keep all of these little berries so you have them. And then here we have those holly branches and I love the details of all the leaves and it gives us little areas to put the berries on. Whenever I'm die cutting, I feel like things kind of feel a little bit two dimensional. So I always like to go in with some inks. So here I'm using fake plant, which is just a little bit darker than this green cardstock. And I'm just going to hit the edges of my cardstock with a little bit of ink. And just by adding that little bit of ink to the edges, it really gives it some nice depth and dimension and we'll make it more 3D. It's pretty quick and easy to do, but it just really brings a lot of life onto these little branches and stems. Now to glue this together, I love that it gives you little guides on where to put the berries, so I'll add glue down to there. And then I'll go in with one of these little adhesive pokey tools, and it's really easy to just pick up the berries from there and place them right onto the holly branch. I'll tell you guys, having one of these little pokey tools or a little tweezers really makes it so much easier to glue down those little pieces. And in little to no time, we've got that all glued together and it really brought it to life with those berries. Now, if you don't wanna use a real twine, I thought this twine die was really cool as well to get sort of the faux look on your card. Here, I'm gonna die cut this out using some nice cream colored cardstock and we'll run it right through our die cutting machine to cut it all out. You're gonna to need to cut this twine die out twice and I'm going to add some adhesive to the back of this and then all we need to do is line it up right in the center there with the circle on top of the other one and place it right down. Once these are adhered together then, it's a matter of deciding how you want it. You can sort of be kind of playful with it, but I think I'm just going to adhere it right into the center of the card. Once we find our spot, we're going to adhere it down and then I've added adhesive onto the back so we can just take our pieces, quickly fold them over and bring them right to the back. And I'll follow suit and do the same thing right on the other side. Now, wait a minute. I don't know how I could be so dumb right now, but the whole point of this is to seal the holly branches underneath it. You can sort of get a player under there to remove some of that adhesive. And then I'm gonna go in here and sneak my branches right underneath and nobody will ever know that we forgot to do this step before we adhered it down. All right, and for this one, I'm gonna use the green and bronze and I'm just gonna go in here again using some strong liquid adhesive and that little spot in the center makes it really easy to have a space to adhere the wax seal right down. And this is also why I like to pour them beforehand because pouring it on top of that project would have been a mess. So I like that you get kind of unlimited options and that you can do it on that silicone mat and then place it onto a project afterwards. Now Spellbinders also sent along one of the gold markers they recommend using on top of here. So you could either use the lunar paste or one of these uh, markers. So I'm going to shake this out and then the tip comes white like this. So you just have to pump it onto your cardstock until you get some of the sort of paint flowing through the marker. All right, and once you get that flowing, it's super nice and shiny. And then all you need to do is just simply lightly go over top of the sentiment and you can really easily coat it in this gold. So it gives a similar look to the lunar paste, but it gives you a little bit more kind of fine detail to go in here and make sure that everything is nice and covered. You still want to use a light pressure as you're doing it though. So there we have that finished card. I love that kind of subtle foil background on the navy cardstock and how we were able to put everything together using the twine and holly stems and finishing it off nicely with that wax seal. This is one of my favorite cards I've created in a while. I just love the elegance of it with all of that foiling and beautiful shine. Now I also wanna share how to use some of this excess foil on your project. So Spellbinders has these really beautiful solid plates that come in a couple different shapes and sizes. I'll have them linked down below. I love this oval one and this is the size I'm gonna use for today's card making project. So I'll place the oval right down onto my glimmer machine. Then I'm going to again place this pretty side down onto the foil plate. You can kind of feel where the last foil was removed and with that textured side, you want that upwards facing the cardstock. And here I thought using sort of this plum purple color was going to be really beautiful. So I'll place this down right onto the card. All right, once the light went solid, I pulled it out, placed it in my platinum machine. I'm going to place down the plates that go along with it. And then especially with these solid plates, you want to move really slowly as it runs through your die cutting machine. 
So go really nice and slow, just to ensure that all of that foil is going to transfer since it's a much more solid surface area that it's running through. All right, and then we can peel this right off and you can see it did a really great job at giving a nice solid foil job. And I love that this is such a really easy and beautiful way to use any of your excess foil. So it'll just give you a nice reverse image in whatever shape foil plate that you used. Now I wanna add this purple background onto a card and to do so, all I'm gonna do is go in with my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors and cut right around this oval, leaving a little bit of that purple border. The shape is super simple to follow and cut out, so I won't be needing to die cut anything. Now to add a floral cluster down, I'm gonna use the poinsettia floral and some of the leaves from the floral stag die set. This usually creates a beautiful deer and lots of floral arrangements in here. And I like to use some of the flowers separately if I wanna make more of an elegant Christmas card. Here I'll go in with the different dies and place them down to cut them out of different colors of cardstock. I love that with the florals, you get everything that you need for that flower on one piece, so it makes it easy that you're not gonna lose any of the little pieces. And then I'll run this right through my die cutting machine to cut everything out. When it comes to putting together the poinsettia, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna take the second layer, place it on top of this first one, and stagger the petals in between each other, and then glue that right down. And there's also a little floral center that you can place down as well. You could stop there, but I like to add a little bit of liquid glue on top of the floral center. Because there's a couple little berries, I like to take my little gem picker and just place those right on to the center. And with this little gem picker, it makes it super easy to do these little tiny berries like that. And those berries just add a great amount of texture to the center of that floral. Now, once you're done adhering that together, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of game over ink on my blending tool. And I'm just going to go in and ink blend the edges here of that floral using a little bit of this darker red color ink. Again, this isn't a necessary step, but I find that just adding that bit of dimension to the floral really helps to bring it to life and make it stand out nicely. With the leaves, I'll follow suit by going in with a darker green color. Here I'm using a bit of fake plant, and I'm just going to tap that onto the leaf to add a little bit of dimension to the die cut. You can really see that's kind of game changing. I'll adhere this purple background on some foam tape on the front and center of our card. Then I can go in and glue down my flowers using a little bit of liquid glue. And I'm gonna kind of make them follow down this edge of the card and create a little bouquet here. And then as I go, I can bring in some greenery and sort of tuck this underneath and in between the florals. I'm not super particular on where everything goes, but I just find sticking lots of greenery underneath here and kind of building around with all of the greenery really helps to kind of make a nice bouquet of flowers. And there's also some of these little florals that I've cut out of yellow that are in the same set that we can kind of mix in to the bundle. And adding in these florals just gives a nice pop of color around the bouquet. One last time then, I'll place in one of the wax seals. Here I'm using the Merry Christmas and I like kind of the marbled effect that we got on this seal. And I'm gonna kind of tuck it right in next to the floral bundle. All right, and last but not least, I'll go in using a little bit of Slivery and Wet Lunar Paste. For this, I'm gonna go into the poinsettia centers and I'm just going to brush a little bit right on to the center just to bring the yellow kind of gold color back into there. That's so much easier to add afterwards than kind of cut those separately from yellow cardstock. And then I'm also going to grab a really tiny amount on my brush there and I'm just going to go in on the Merry Christmas sentiment and easily brush over top. And that's, yeah, a super easy way to go in. It's very similar to the detail you get with the marker. And that is just such a great way to use the lunar paste. So if you've got these wax seals and you don't quite have these markers, but you have lunar paste in your craft room, check that out. I love the brush and that gets into lots of those details in there. You do just wanna make sure once you're done with the lunar paste that you clean it thoroughly out of your brush and that way your brush will stay nice and clean. So there we have our finished card. I really love that foiled background, how we were able to use our excess waste foil and get that really pretty opal shine on the purple card stock. The bundle of flowers using that floral stag die is just beautiful and it proves that you could use that die set without creating the deer and still get such beautiful effects with the florals. Now, one last thing that I wanted to show is that Spellbinders also released these beautiful brushed envelopes in a couple of different metallic type colors that are just beautiful. I think this envelope is going to match this card just beautifully, so I think this is how I'm going to send it. And once you put your card inside and you're ready to send things off, you can then of course use the wax seals in a traditional manner. So you could have them made already and adhere them down using a strong adhesive, or you can always pour them onto your envelope like you usually would and kind of do it right onto your envelope once you get good at it. And so using them with kind of these gold wax seals is gonna give you just such a beautiful kind of regal effect that I love. 
So I did want to quickly share this since that really is sort of the traditional way to use the wax seals, add them onto the envelopes and really give that beautiful special touch to your card making project. All right, you guys, I truly had so, so much fun today playing with the Sealed by Spellbinders collection and mixing it in with some of my products for my Christmas collection as well. Leave me a comment down below on which other cards were your favorite and if you're gonna try out doing these wax seals. I think they're tons of fun. I'll also have product links down to everything that I used today and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. It. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending time with me, and I'll see you all very soon in another card making video. Have a great day. Bye!